Okay, so this is L3, lipid absorption. Uh, basically, what we left off last time was we had the mag, monoacylglycerol, diffusing into the enterocyte, and the free fatty acids also diffusing into the enterocyte. And there's two fatty acid pools that we need to deal with. There are fatty acids with less than or equal to 10 carbons, and those are going to enter the portal blood directly. And portal blood is the blood that flows from the enterocyte to the liver, so these fatty acids are going to move directly through the enterocyte and enter the portal blood straight away. Okay, And then in the blood, they bind to albumin which is a protein and they go directly to the liver and the liver is going to pull them out of the blood and metabolize them and the reason that this is going to happen to fatty acids with less than or equal to 10 carbons is acyl-CoA synthetase does not bind short chain fatty acids. Okay, and we're going to learn about acyl-CoA synthetase in about two seconds. So fatty acids less than or equal to 10 carbons basically go directly to the liver um, where they're going to be metabolized by the liver. We have a different role for fatty acids that are greater than or equal to 12 carbons. Okay, and what's going to happen to them is intracellular so inside the enterocyte, reformation of tag. So when we were digesting tag, what we did is pulled the tag apart into mag and two free fatty acids. Now inside the cell, we're going to take mag and two free fatty acids and create a tag. And this is going to be done using acyl CoA synthetase. So ACL CoA synthetase is the enzyme that is going to join the mag to a free fatty acid, the DAG to a free fatty acid, and make tag. So what's happening is we have mag. We're going to add a free fatty acid, and that makes DAG. And then we're going to add another free fatty acid and that produces tag. And the enzyme catalyzing this is acyl-CoA synthetase. So we have reformed tag inside of our enterocyte. That tag is going to accumulate in the endoplasmic reticulum. And so we accumulate tag. We're also going to accumulate fat soluble vitamins. You can probably hear Honey Bear barking at something. Some imaginary villain outside. It's probably a cow. So, fat soluble vitamins. And if you can't remember those, you should. A, D, E, and K. And our good friend cholesterol will also accumulate as well. And so this is going to be a fat particle. And to that fat particle, or it's going to become a fat particle basically when we attach lipoprotein B14. 
48. And this would be where if we were in class, some clever, generally young man would shout bingo because we said B48. So this is a lipoprotein, B48. And B48 basically is a name tag for this fat particle. It's gonna say, hey, body, I came from an enterocyte. I am a fat particle. And this B48 plus the fat that accumulated is known as an apolipoprotein. Lipoprotein B48. So then we have apolipoprotein. Pro apolipoprotein functions. So this is what the protein is actually going to do is it has three functions. It stabilizes the lipoprotein. So lipoprotein is stabilized. That's an R. Lipoprotein is stabilized as it circulates in the blood to its section second function is it confers specificity and you can think of this as like a name tag it says this is what I am allows the body to recognize it as an exogenous lipid. And the reason it's exogenous is it's being synthesized or it's being made from fats that came from the diet. So they've been absorbed, synthesized this new tag, and those are considered exogenous lipids as opposed to endogenous lipids, which come from the body itself. Three, so the confer specificity is the name tag. The third thing it does is it stimulates enzymatic reactions in muscle and adipose. Okay, and so this is gonna be important when we want the muscle and the adipose to take up this exogenous lipid. Okay, this fat particle, or lipoprotein, is pinched off. So it's pinched off from the endoplasmic reticulum. As a lipid vesicle. Okay, from there, it's going to go to the Golgi apparatus. In the Golgi apparatus, we're going to um, attach carbohydrates. So they're attached to the protein to form a coat. So this will make more sense when we do the enterocyte drawing because you guys will be able to see what's actually happening. And so now we have a completed fat particle. And this fat particle has a specific name and that name is Kylo Micron. Okay, and so the chylomicron the chylomicron 
is exocytosed. into lymphatic circulation, okay? And so this comes back to um, way back at the very beginning of class, we talked about each um, villus has a central lacteal, and so this is where that plays in. We're going to put the chylomicron into that central lacteal, and then it's going to um, move into lymphatic circulation and um, when it enters lymphatic circulation, we'll talk about it in a minute, but then it's slowly gonna move into the blood. And so a chylomicron is important. They only come from the enterocytes, from the small intestine, and a chylomicron is a lipoprotein, and it transports transports exogenous Mom. lipids. Hi. Now you can hear Lydia. Okay, so chylomicrons are lipoproteins that specifically transport exogenous lipids, so dietary lipids. All other Lipoproteins transport endogenous lipids. Okay, so something to keep in mind that's important about the chylomicron is it delivers lipids to tissues other than the liver. So your exogenous lipids, this is in contrast to almost everything else we've learned about, your exogenous lipids are not going to go to the liver they're first going to go to the muscle and the adipose. So approximately 80% of the lipid delivered to muscle and adipose. We're going to talk about it in a second, but there's this other lipoprotein called a chylomicron remnant. And the chylomicron remnant is exocytosed. Oh, no, wrong word. Endocytosed. By the liver. So the liver is going to remove the chylomicron remnant from the blood. So what we have is we have a chylomicron. So chylomicron contains lots and lots of tag. And then we have a chylomicron remnant. And the blood vessels in your adipose and your muscle have a protein or an enzyme, which is a protein, which contains peptide bonds called lipoprotein lipase. And so this lipoprotein lipase lives or is located in the blood vessels of your muscle and adipose. And what it does is it recognizes B48, that protein we talked about a while ago, and says this is an exogenous source of lipids, and it grabs a hold of that, and basically what it does is it catalyzes the conversion of 
tag. So this color micron contains mainly tag. It's actually, I'll share the number. It's 82% tag. So it's going to take that 82% tag and it's going to break it into DAG plus a free fatty acid, which are going to be absorbed. by muscle and adipose. Okay, so it's 82% tag, 7% phospholipid, two percent cholesterol, nine percent protein. Okay, and so this is really important. We're gonna take the chylomicron, which has that protein B48 attached to it. There's the B48, it's a part of it. And the lipoprotein lipase is gonna recognize that B48 and say, hey, this is an exogenous lipid. It will grab a hold of it, and then it will take the tag that's inside of the chylomicron and make a DAG and a free fatty acid, which are absorbed by the muscle and the adipose. Okay, we're gonna waste a whole sheet of paper on one line, but that's okay. It's the state's paper. So maybe two lines. Okay, chylomicrons enter the lymphatic or enter lymphatic circulation make more sense, enter lymphatic circulation to prevent sudden changes in blood lipid. Chylomicrons in blood peak 30 minutes to 3 hours after a meal. Okay, so that's lipid absorption. What we did is we took the two free fatty acids and a mag and we recombine them to make a tag those accumulate the endoplasmic reticulum we attached b48 which is basically a name tag and then in the golgi apparatus we coated that in carbohydrates then that was exocytosed um, to the lymphatic from the lymphatic it goes to the blood it does not do go to the liver, the liver is not going to pull it out of circulation directly. What's going to happen to it is the lipoprotein lipase on the muscle is going to identify the B48, say, hey, this is an exogenous lipid. It's going to um, catalyze the reaction resulting in DAG and free fatty acid, which are then absorbed by the muscle and the adipose. So we've taken our fatty acids and our mag and gotten them from the enterocyte all the way to the muscle and the adipose. Okay, and so that is where we are. I think that is good.